now that we've done a recap of our periodic table with regards to our metals and non-metals as well as our metal alloys let's take a look at our neutralization reaction when we add an acid and a base together so over here we have our acid look at the nice yellow color we're going to take that all the way to our pH indicator it will be a yellow color indicating that this is indeed an acid okay secondly our base take a look at that color when we take it to the pH scale we'll see it'll be about between 10 and 11 so we can see that is a base as well in this example so when we get our neutralization reaction we'll always get two products salt and water sometimes there can be another product as well we'll get into that now but salt and water will always be products of our neutralization reaction between acids and bases let's take a look at an example of that okay so for our first example we are going to do hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide and see what that gives us so let's start with the beginning we write let's get my pen here we write we have got an acid and we are going to add that to a base so what I'm gonna do uh, you can do that in your examples as well it helps quite a lot remember we said our acid is yellow and our base is going to be blue to help us keep track okay so what happens our acid and our base will give us two products we said salt and water okay now let's write this specific equation in words for us this example so for our first one we're going to add we are going to use hydrochloric acid and for our second one our base we are going to add sodium hydroxide apologize about the handwriting it's quite difficult to write on a computer screen okay so take our yellow highlighter we highlight our acid we highlight our base and let us look at the products so out of this reaction we will get sodium chloride I'm just going to write the plus over here since we can't fit it in plus water. So sodium chloride will be our salt. That is correct. And water will be our water. So I forgot the order. Okay. So now let's look at what this will be written in our chemical symbols. So first one we've got hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acids formula is HCl you can write your L in cursive to help you show you it's an L and not an I otherwise you might get confused secondly we have our sodium hydroxide sodium Na hydroxide OH once again go to your highlighters make sure you know which one is which one and now for the fun part our products so over here with our products we will now find NaCl and our other product will be H2O so NaCl for those that do not know this is a nice name for our common table salt and H2O like you probably know by now is water this work is for you to do at home yourselves I've given you a nice question about some of the work we've done now if you take a look at the bottom here you can see this is going to be our key I'm gonna draw a little arrow for you there so you will use these answers and you will fit them into these little spaces over here Please do this on your Word document that you submit at the end of this lesson for me, please.
So now that we have done the theory for our lesson, let us get to the fun part, the practical experiment. So for this week's practical experiment, we will be making our own homemade baking soda and vinegar volcanoes. Whoop, whoop. So this is what we call a timeless experiment. You have all probably seen this in movies or series, but maybe a lot of you never had the opportunity to make it yourself. So please, if you feel like making one, this week is the chance. So, before we get into our experiment, let us take a look at the chemistry at hand. So, what I want you to do for this one, take your yellow highlighters and your blue highlighters and highlight all the bases and acids we mention in these slides, like I did in this one. So, let's go through it. So, baking soda is a basic compound called sodium, sodium bicarbonate. Vinegar is a diluted solution that contains acidic acid. So once again, there we see our base and our acid. Now let's see what happens when we add them together. So the baking soda and vinegar reaction is actually two separate reactions. The first one is called an acid-base reaction. So what happens here? When vinegar and baking soda are first mixed together, hydrogen ions in the vinegar react with the sodium and bicarbonate ions in the baking soda. The result of the, this initial reaction is two new chemicals. So out of this, when we add these two, we get two new things. Carbonic acid and sodium acetate, two very big words we have there. So the second reaction, we talked about the first one now, the second reaction taking place is called a decomposition reaction. The carbonic acid formed as a result of the first reaction immediately begins to decompose into water and carbon dioxide gas. So like we've seen in our previous experiments, Two of our products are forming water and carbon dioxide. So now, let's take a look at that. So just like carbon dioxide bubbles in a carbonated drink, the carbon dioxide that formed as the carbonic acid decomposed rises to the top of the mixture. So an example of this would be, think of your favorite soft drink, from Coca-Cola to Fanta, anything you can think of. Now imagine if you shake that bottle or that can a bit, what happens when you open it? you get that fizziness coming out of the top of the can, a little opening. So that is exactly what's going to happen here. So this reaction between baking soda and vinegar will create the bubbles and foam you see when you mix them together. So if you mix a large amount of them together and you have a small opening in your container, what do you think is going to happen? Let's find out with your practical experiments. So most important tool we'll be needing for this week, except the baking soda and vinegar, will be our creativity. So please use things like, you can use uh, wires to make a nice structure and then maybe cover it with paper mache if you are very creative. You can also use paints or colors to color that in. And this example is a nice little volcano like you can see. You can add some water, you can add some water around it, some grass, some trees. I even saw one with some dinosaurs indicating the prehistorical times. So please use your creativity, show us what your volcano looks like. Send us some photos and videos so that we can see what your volcano looks like. We'll get into the experiment just now. We are just discussing some basic things. So with this experiment, the most important thing is have fun. And by having fun, you will also learn much more than you actually notice.